Hello, everybody. Hope everyone's having a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, depending where you are. Uh, Enchante. Hi. <laughs> Hi. My... Hi. Are we are we just like going right into it? I haven't even introduced myself. Hi. I mean, you can. You, you can. You can no. just go ahead. No. <laughs> no. You're the one who started introducing yourself immediately, Tenta. <laughs> you said hi. Yeah, I said hi. And then nothing. I yeah, I know because I, you know, I don't know. I've been do we've been doing this together for over a year. I still don't know how to introduce things. Anyway, hi, my name is Nur. I, I voice two milk and uh, handle all narration. My name is Ten Ten Arce, and mm -hmm. I voice Ignis. Uh huh. <laughs> Epilogy. Yeah, tell me more. Karia. Mm -hmm. So on a walkie. Oh my god. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. <laughs> my name is Mochi, and I will be voicing Il Fado de Rie. A test of your oh. reflexes. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Uh, Akira, Mikado, Kororo, and Titania. And I'm Brevi, and I'm going to be voicing Miser Rex, Canis Espada, and Mikado's assistant. And that's Macha, and he voices. <laughs> and until <laughs> Macha's here, um, <laughs> he's snagging other people. Uh, and that, that's Macha in the corner. He, he voices people. He voices oh. Rido, drove, drove, drove here, and uh, Vienna Sausage. <laughs> yeah, Vienna sausage. Great. Yep. <laughs> anyway, hi. Uh, welcome in, uh, Tomochi. Yeah, eighteen days till pre, to eighteen days till debut. Uh, welcome in, Shumo. Welcome in, Fruity Undertaker. Welcome in, uh, Dragomir. Yeah, welcome. Uh, more cafe on Chante today. I know, guy. Everyone's very sad, sobbing even that we're not doing Detroit Become Human again. But we'll be back after we're done with this route. But yeah. Uh. Last time, bloodlust happened. Oh, <laughs> yeah, huh. yeah. 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 Last time when Cafe on Shunse bloodlust. Tragic um, backstory. Yeah. Blood tragic lust. backstory. Ignis found out that he's actually I don't know, did a bad in his childhood. Yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He but did a bad he thing. He also found. He also found out he's just a hungry guy. Yeah, he's the very, only hungry guy. In he's fact. just so hungry. He's very, very hungry. He eats human food. That's that's like a weird thing. Um, will that come into play later? Who who knows? But that's where we're right now. It's been two weeks, <laughs> so let's let's get started. You close to shore. The smell of sea salt hit my nose. Karu left left towards the crashing waves. With that momentum, he dove into the ocean. Oh, I'm here. <laughs> From this angle, <laughs> the little guy looks like any old seal. Also, Miser's here now. <laughs> I didn't realize I was here. <laughs> this would make a wonderful photograph, but at risk of angering Rindo again, I shall honorably refrain. It was all smiles on that windy beach as Koro splashed playfully in the shallow water. Man, how nice for you to take a dip. Thanks for totally ruining the moment. Ah ha ha ha. In the end, nothing could ever take the wind out of Koro's sails. He's not a boat. He isn't? Then suddenly. No. Ah! Had you steak. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I realized Ignis and I stood side by side, engaging in normal conversation at last. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it then occurred to Ignis shortly after. He immediately reacted by averting his gaze. So why? We're gonna get closer to him or maintain the space. If you are new here and you don't, aren't familiar with how we do Tuesdays, if there, if you go into the channel point redeems you see, grab our controller or redeem that is 100 channel points, you can choose what we say. And maybe we'll get a, a good ending or a bad ending. Who knows? And, and if no one chooses, I roll a dice. Exactly. Mm. All right. I just remembered. So, oh shit! I gotta. I gotta. Oh. oh. Oh, thank God. Snuggle up. <laughs> snuggle. Okay, we're snuggling. Snuggle get close up. To them. I missed the closest that he and I and Thomas shared once before. 
I took an inconspicuous step close to him. Ellipses. By the looks of things, Ignis didn't exactly try to escape from me, but he still pursed his lip awkwardly. It was like we were thrust back in time, an awkward portrait of our early days. It felt rather lonely. Ellipses. Ellipses. After our conversation wafted into the ocean air, he and I stared blankly at the water. Stare. G. Hey, Ignis. What? Forgive me for saying this overstepped some kind of boundary, but after earlier, something about it made me happy. Huh? Beasts technically don't ever eat because they don't have to, right? If you were one of the beasts that couldn't eat, I would have never seen the look on your face after eating a big meal. That big, goofy smile. Two milk. I know you're suffering right now, but I still want to spend time with you over at Enchante if you would like to visit. I want to feed you whatever meal you want every day of my life. Every day? It, it, yes. I don't know how to say this, but that's how much I... Ah. Ellipses. Big ellipses. How much I... Wait. What was I trying to say? Girl! <laughs> yeah. Koro thrashed at the water violently, which splashed upward and hit Ignis in the face. Ah. Ellipses. Bigger ellipses. Oh, my god. <laughs> Hands you a Kororo. Hands you a steak. Wait. <laughs> Water droplets trickled from the bridge of his nose to the tip. Till it dripped down. Oh my god, it's Vacha! Hi! Hey, wow. Vacha! Welcome! Hello! Hello. Yo. Wow. You didn't miss much. <laughs> Ignis held this pose quietly, letting the curtain of water on his face fall slowly to the ground. Ko Oro! Wait, what? You little. <laughs> Unable to contain himself, Ignis nearly popped the vein for trying the roar at Ko Oro. Ow! Wait. Food! <laughs> Ignis, eat! Ah! Uh. Koro poked his head out of the water to say something unusually. What? <laughs> to say uh -huh. something unusually. That is very unusually. <laughs> the others, who stood watching us in the distance, gathered toward towards us, curious about what was going on, unusually. <laughs> Koro floated joyfully in the water, pointing his big eyes at us. Eat this food. Eat. Said Koro before <laughs> diving once more into the water, swimming away. <laughs> okay. Huh? Koro, wait, where are you going? The depths obscured Koro's shadow, and suddenly he was gone. That idiot. Doesn't he know how dangerous it is to swim in uncharted water? Now at Subway with Nathan Drake. <laughs> we oh, have to God. hurry and chase him. Hi, Kainas. Hello. He was swimming <laughs> down the eastward current. We must catch him before it's too late. Hey, Cage Bird. Think you can track Kororo down with a spell? Cage Bird. Mm. What's the matter? You needn't become involved if there's an issue. No. He hasn't gone too far yet. I, I can do it. I'll execute the spell at once. Eel soared into the air, casting the same detection spell he had previously used to locate the pa Pakus. Damn it, Kororo. Doesn't he know that this is Minotaur territory? Twitch.tv slash check these. He's always <laughs> poking that snout of his where it doesn't belong. Ignis mumbled to himself, presumably out of concern for Kororo. That's when... Ignis and food? Oh, hey, Rindo. <laughs> Hello. I heard the little guy say eat, but food. 
Any idea how he figured out how to say a word like that? It's not like he hears it all the time or anything. <laughs> uh, he'd be saying steak if that were true. Who knows? Uh, mm-hmm. Yes. You're asking the wrong guy. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Maybe she saw something on TV or heard it in town somewhere. Yeah, maybe on Koro's regular trips into town, but the timing is too convenient for me. Why parrot such a random phrase? It, it, Kororo's a seal, not a parrot. <laughs> From a short distance, Spicer and Mr. Rendo watch the situation with great curiosity. I bring the human element to this situation. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Thanks to Eel Spell, we were able to track Koro's location. The former angel gl- glided above us, guiding us th- through the path on our pursuit. But at the end of our long run, we hit a dead end. Our path blocked by a, g- by a g- gigantic icy boulder. This CG. Hmm. It seemed that the only way we could progress any further would be to dive underwater. Eel, noticing our predicament, landed on the ground, albeit while stumbling. Target's location confirmed. It seems Kororo is standing idly just through this underpass through here. He's, he's standing? On oh. his own two flippers. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, that's odd, but good work, you. Uh, but by the looks of it. Wait, is Kororo a selkie? Hmm. No. But it doesn't seem like you fully recovered since the last time you were in Bestia looking for two milk, have you? True. Huh? Really? It suddenly became evident in me. Evident in me. Okay, inside of me. I noticed noted how the color had been draining from Eel's face. You know, you'd be doing us a big favor by speaking up now and then. We wouldn't have to... Wouldn't to, to have to push you too hard. <laughs> <laughs> but then, no one else could have successfully located Kororo. Isn't that right? However, pardon my request, but moving forward, I hope I am of use to you in ways other than combat. Mm-hmm. You've done enough, Eel. You know. Rest up for now. Bye. <laughs> Indeed. An obstacle of this size poses no challenge for us. Oh. In one swift oh. movement. Got us. Rindo's fucking dead. Uh, <laughs> oops. dead. Sorry, Rindo. Uh, you should have moved. I <laughs> guess I am a dull hand now, too. Wait, hold on. I got hands you a steak, Rindo. I put steak on neck stump. <laughs> this is not working. Oh. Yeah. Candace unsheathed his blade, raised into the air, and shattered the huge block of ice with Rindo as the casualty. A path opened before us, but its entrance was damp and did dimly lit. Was it dank? <laughs> it's dank in Runepa. Is this an ice oh. cave? Ha. Uh, I had no idea this was dank in Runepa. <laughs> what are our character assignments? <laughs> oh, God. Your this ultimate was... stake. Oh, God. <laughs> this place was so close to the Werecat stronghold. Ignis, it seems, shared my wonder at such a secluded location. It's also wonder... orange as shit. Why is it so orange? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wonder why Kuro swam all the way here. Probably just to mess with us. Let's nab him already so we can teach him a lesson. As soon as we set foot inside, my skin clenched as the stone walls and what? ground insulated the punishing chill. Couldn't have used any other word. <laughs> that was so strange. <laughs> Very <laughs> unusually. What? <laughs> I mean, I get what they're going for. I mean, it does feel like that when you go into a really cold area. It's just really weird on paper. <laughs> this is one of those weird. good in theory, good on pa- good in theory, not on paper. Wait, good in practice, not on paper. I mean, I think that's just this whole game so far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I took a deep breath, hoping my resolve would warm me in the freezing depths. Soon we arrived at an opening that's no longer orange. The narrow path emptied into a wide hall. We can stand side by side with room to play. <laughs> room to play? <laughs> mm. Okay. This is... It wasn't exactly a cave, but rather a... 
looks like a shrine made of ice. I thought I might have faintly recognized the scene from a historical documentary. What? What? Then, in the pool of water situated at the center of the shrine was... Kauro, poking Here his head out enthusiastically. Boy! <laughs> 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 that was that <laughs> Thank you for the biddies, Macha. <laughs> Koro poking his head enthusiastically. Ah, Kororo, we were worried about you. I hold my arms out wide for him to come. Normally, whenever I pose like this, Kororo would cry out loudly and leap into my arms, but this time. Kororo, for some reason, he didn't budge. Instead, Kororo began swim to, to swim towards the rear of the shrine. He emerged from the water and poked a, a wall with his horn, as if to direct our attention to this spot. His tiny horn was pointed at a small engraving etched into the wall. Etched. Is it a mural? No, these are just pictures. I've seen these in the GPM database before. They're ancient bestian characters. Kororo turned around, seeing that we had taken notice of the hieroglyphics. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, excuse me. What the fuck? Kororo had the Muriel, Muriel to his back. Then he began, <laughs> he began to speak in a manner... Those of us who normally interacted with him at Enchante had never heard before. Ah, <laughs> Ellipses. Uh... <laughs> oh, the, shit. The lively mood among our expedition party was replaced by a solemn, focused attention. We stood fully entranced by the little creature as if it were about to recite a lengthy tale. Good luck, Mochi. <laughs> so began the little creature. Uh, the... Fall oh, past the... <laughs> 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 He said to the group as he waddled alongside the mural, na narrating it. <laughs> Please. One day, human came. What the fuck? But bestia already. What? Firewolf. There. He has an accent? What? Wolf sleep. Snork me me. Hunt a wolf, <laughs> human, a wolf, <laughs> wake oh, up, oh. and food, lots eat food. What the fuck? All of us jerked in a reaction to hear hearing him speak so clearly. Karo, unfazed, continued. Wolf, are... What? <laughs> We need three. I like to think that Kororo has like a pointer, like spectacles, <laughs> yeah. and like, like a tie right now. Yes, and a little, a little like um, earpiece, little laser pointer. Oh, oh yes. yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Tigrish, Kanash, Ignis Wolf. What? Eat food. Become. Um. Become as God. Uh, here. Um. You think. Come. Huh? Yeah, I got this one, guys. What? <laughs> <laughs> as if to signal the end of his story, Koro cried out as he usually did. Koro, what's going on? Gotten into you all of a sudden. What the fuck? He seems different somehow. What is it coming? Somehow. <laughs> somehow. As if coming here awoke something inside of him. That's cool and all. But why did he mention the firewolves and my name out of nowhere? Also, are these werecats like Dromi? On a whim, I glance once more at the mural where I begin to parse. Like in Final Fantasy, various Get beasts it. and men illustrated in all manners of situations. Whoa! Each they were monster fuckers! <laughs> oh no. <laughs> each depiction I noticed had wolves donned in flames connecting each one. Perhaps Kororo is following the contents of the mural 
and attaching words to those images? Sure sounded like it. He even trotted alongside the pictures. This shrine must be ancient. Agnes, does any of it look familiar to you? Nope. Couldn't tell you what the first thing these pictures mean. The ancient text is too blurry to make out. What if this wall was some kid who came and vandalized the wall? I'm a dumbass. <laughs> I think the pictures look too purposeful for that to be the case. Oh, good. Hands you a steak. Oh, thank you. Um, here's a thought. Oh, about a steak. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> In exchange for the thought, why don't we take the words that Koro mentioned earlier and rephrase them in our own terms. Huh? Why should we bother? Ignis? Uh... Well, humor me for a second, please. <laughs> it must connect to you somehow. Couldn't hurt to try, right? Fine. If you insist. God. I, I do. But how should we rephrase it? Oh my god. I replayed Koro's presentation in my head. Don't Are we getting a flashback, don't flashback please? Flashback, don't flashback. No, okay. If I could summon what exactly Koro said in a flashback, I could imitate the words for everyone. Far past. Bestia. One day. Human. Came. Yes, this was about two minutes ago. Hmm. <laughs> Simple enough. He referred, of course, to the ancient Bestia. Next, he said. One day, humans came and. What? <laughs> what even is? <laughs> what, oh what? shit, the corruption. Oh no. <laughs> Sorry, I am glitching out one moment. In other words, in the ancient times, humans had visited Bestia. Yes, fantastic. Let's expand the thoughts into proper sentences to decipher the meaning. This feels like a lot of assuming. <laughs> yeah. Ew, I hate to be a bother, but could you help oh us remember God. what Kyra said? Recite everything else. <laughs> oh, of course. I will repay, replay my memories. Eel immediately obliged me at Miser's request. He began to repeat Koro's exact words effortlessly. No, don't you Is fucking this a flashback? Yeah. <laughs> Far past, bestia, one day, human, came. Um. Come? <laughs> oh. But, bestia already, firewolf, there, wolf, sleep. What the fuck? Wolf, human, wake up, and food, lots, space, period, eat. Space. <laughs> wolf. Are fuck <laughs> miniature <laughs> you, tiger, conch, <laughs> ignis, wolf, food, eat, become. Come, come. Do we really need to? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> if we do what we did earlier to interpret Kogro's meaning, oh my god! Earlier Kora. was a minute ago. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> a long time ago, humans visited Bastia. No, really? By already? <laughs> Did he mean originally? Could it mean that the wounds of legend were dominant in Bestia at the time? Perhaps the arrival of the mankind woke these wolves from hibernation and they partook in bountiful feast afterwards. Festival feast of humans hands you a steak. Ah. They were firewolf. The <laughs> werecat watched. Ignis is a wolf. When he eats, these qualities are enhanced. Uh, is that right? Yup. I think that's <laughs> just about covers it. Bro. We have all Bro. the mystery, everyone. Bro. Bro. <laughs> the wolf of flames. That must be what's drawn here on the mirror. Oh my oh, god. We can is. <laughs> we are at door the explorer levels Ooh. right now. Yeah, dude, seriously. <laughs> can you say firewolf? Firewolf. The beginning part sounds like an old fairy tale. So why do you mention food all of a sudden? Maybe the humans? 
Maybe the guy who came the best year gave food to the wolves. Said, Maybe the humans got eaten, you fucking idiot. Oh my mm -hmm. god. Hmm. I don't know the details, but... Hmm. The wolves mentioned here, going by their name and description, could refer to Ignis's ancestors, right? Ugh. Oh, that really <laughs> got you, didn't it? Oh, that's right! Oh my god! The, the fact that it refers to, to what appear... The fact that it refers to what appear to be ancient firewolves aligns with Ignis perfectly. It even mentions them eating! Okay, we are in Dora the Explorer. Like, this is <laughs> so ridiculous. He. Hmm. Plus, Komoro even mentioned that the wolf yes. refers to the firewolves clearly. I they feel like oh I said the same thing about mm. 20 times already. <laughs> Mr. Rindo let out a sigh in contemplation. Don't. Shut up, Rindo. <laughs> and placed his hand beneath his chin. No. <laughs> mm. So, let me get this straight. Because humans fed Ignis's ancestors, the descendants what is can eat food too. What eat is steak too. I'm not Their sure that's quite it. The descendants can eat steak. We wait. We're sub we should have really replaced food with steak this whole time. <laughs> what a huge steak! <laughs> a huge. <laughs> Whoa. The steak, huge steak. Whoa. Everything else the little creature said is somehow still unclear. Is it? <laughs> is it? My head was not reattached properly. I apologize, everyone. <laughs> right. This doesn't change what we know about Ignis. We knew he's a beast, didn't we? Is that not obvious? Besides, what about the werecat part? It watches, as in watches over someone. Perhaps it referred to a werecat companion. Maybe Dromi knows something, since he's a werecat. As soon as I said that... Get the fuck away from me. Ah, cold. Oh, that's Dromi. <laughs> Suddenly, a freezing cold drop of water splashed onto my forehead. Whoa, that scared me. I suspect that some of the flames radiating from Ignis's body melted the ice on the ceiling. I tested my hypothesis by glancing upward, and when I did... Eh. Oh look, there's a mural up there too. Oh I... my god. No. <laughs> As my voice bounced up around the stony cave. Stony. <laughs> I thought it was made of ice. ice? <laughs> Everyone looked up in unison. What we saw was a giant firewolf. In other words, wow. Ignis's ancestors. Man, that we gotta... could have been I'm shocked. I am <laughs> so <laughs> we, we gotta make it, like, abundantly clear, because these idiots w wouldn't understand otherwise. It was a majestic, breathtaking depiction. What? Was it? <laughs> it was so majestic. <laughs> it appeared to be swallowing what looked like other beasts and humans one after the other. I don't know if that's the word you want to use. It looked, it's so majestic. Look, his head's gonna get bitten off. Ellipses. Oh my god, it's the bite of 87! <laughs> oh, oh shit! No five, nine, seven, ready. <laughs> what? Was it the bite of 87? We lowered our heads and looked around. All of a sudden, Miser's face, which seemed hopeful and cheery just a moment ago, became stern. Oh my god. Hey, Ignis, I, I think that was the bite of 87. <laughs> <laughs> if I remember correctly, the firewolves have been persecuted and attacked since 1987, right? <laughs> no, you dipshit, it was 1989! Oh my god. Here, here's Markiplier's play- I mean, not Markiplier, Jesus Christ. Oh, Game oh, Theory everybody. playlist. <laughs> Game Theory. No, not Markiplier, Matt Pat. But that's and just that's a theory. And that's just a theory. A stake. Those are just theories. <laughs> uh, theory. Yeah, all because it's a stupid tradition. What about it? Is Ignis really uh... not get it right now? <laughs> Well, when you think about it, that doesn't make much sense. I need does it? letter blocks, Miser. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the firewolves, other than you, should be decently formidable in battle. Fuck this rest of In other words, there had to be other ones just like you a long time ago, right? So why. Why have your people settled in the furthest corner of the icy border? As if you're exiled. 
could it mean? I'm assuming it's Dromi. I'm assuming it's Dromi. It's, it's Dromi. Well, isn't it? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? The ancient beast imprisoned the firewolves to protect themselves from their own destruction. We werecats were assigned to watch them in prison, passing as their neighbors. Gasp. Yeah. Suddenly, a voice echoed from the entrance. An ominous interruption dotted by footsteps. Wait. Wait. <laughs> For a second, I thought it was Kuro just talking. <laughs> he just gets up and starts walking. Yeah. He gets hard. up, he's actually a hat, and Dromi comes out of the ice with him on his head. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> he like unmelds with the ice. <laughs> Mural, growling at the figure in the dark as if, as, as if to ward them away. There's only one person at whom I'd ever known Koro to growl like that. The shadow appeared, opening his arms in a wide and exaggerated manner, as if to welcome us. Ah, no, now, fellas. Great job making it here. The shrine's been under Werecat protection for a millennia, but it's been forgotten. The Shrine of Record. He raised his voice, beaming with what appeared to be pride. Wow. D. <laughs> yeah, I got one. <laughs> what of it? He's not. <laughs> <laughs> Drew me. Wow, this wasn't obvious. <laughs> what happened? How could this be? What happened? I, mean, I didn't see it coming, but Were... I'm dead. <laughs> Were you back at the Firewolf Stronghold? Oh no! Oh sh! Oh shit! Oh, don't oh, worry God. about that. I've already taken care of the business over there. Jeremy said as much as the white but disconcerting smile. Uh, I'm, I don't know the vibe. We're happy over here, uh, aren't we? Something about him. Something. Something about him unsettled me. Something I really couldn't play. <laughs> you really Way can't play that too. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> hate this route so much. <laughs> I said this much to him bluntly. He's scaring me. I mean, Five Nights at Freddy's is a horror game after all. <laughs> the Weirdcat stared back at Koro, who continued to growl, and he let out a heavy sigh. Man, what a shame. I was hoping to reveal everything to my bro in a big, once in a lifetime way. I've seen your dick, it's not that big. <laughs> That's how you use it, bro. <laughs> but you'll never know. But I never expected Koro to be would be the one to spoil the big surprise. So the reason you separated from the group was because you swam all the way here. Take the step forward as if in Koro's defense, despite still processing the big reveal. Enough, Dromi. Mind telling us what the hell you're blabbering about? We're waiting. <laughs> what do you mean, surprise? What did you mean? When you said the other beast imprisoned the firewolves at the border to prevent destruction. Wow, the weird sentence. Huh. <laughs> this seems pretty obvious. Yeah, I know. Jeremy offered a casual rebuttal, as if it were any other conversation. I mean... It's basically what the Minotaurs are trying to do as we speak. Doesn't make the situation any less lame, but... Since they're aware of how sticky this has been since old times, they're trying to protect Bestia in the only way they know how. From total destruction, aka Ignis. <laughs> no, mate. I'm a firewolf. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, you're not making any sense, you stupid tiger. Oh, got him. Fucking got him. Quit with the riddles and answer the damn question to my face. <laughs> I would. But... Wow, they gave him actually a lot more expressions than they thought. Yeah, like... <laughs> you already know everything. You guys figured out what's written on the ceiling. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. <laughs> It's all pretty clear, you know? Not I know, but we... <laughs> Can you throw the explorer guide us there, please? 
Hmm. Normally, Drew, we would shrink and run at the sound of Ignis's threats, but he didn't bat an hour eyelash, nor did he flinch at Ignis's screams as Ignis's is... as Ignis's is screamed in anger. <laughs> he is no longer the coward hiding behind Ignis, relying upon him for strength. Over, I will oblige. Oh. You're my inspiration, bro. I'll lay it out, just as you asked. Listen, that's the ancestor of the firewolves drawn there on the ceiling. A monster once brought Bestia to the brink of annihilation because it slaughtered men and beast alike. Dash, dash. Monster. 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 You don't belong in this world. <laughs> oh, shut up. That was... <laughs> no, no. Now you do understand. <laughs> yes, you are. You are in bestia. Nothing but a monster. Mm. Hey, this recalled that the faded conversation. Hi ho. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> so. What you are suggesting is that Ignis is rampage of my oh. fucking three characters in a row. <laughs> rampage instinct. Bingo! You got it. He got it from this ancient monster. Having said that, my bro here is the only firewolf that seems to be carrying on his ancestor's legacy. Ah. Me? Judging by the way you speak, have you known about Ignis's rampage instinct all along? The Watcher? No. <laughs> of course! When it comes to my bro, I know everything. What? In the past, I saw it all. I watched my bro commit mass murder. It wasn't just good. It's great! <laughs> And I never no. saw Oh my god! Boo! <laughs> They're great! <laughs> what? His confession rang as words of betrayal to Ignis. You. You do everything. And you kept quiet this entire time. I mean, who was the one always telling me to keep quiet, huh? But why? For what purpose? Well... I could have told you, but... Well, more importantly, you think it's smart leaving the Firewolves alone right now? When Koro took all of his little friends on that wild goose chase? I might have told the Menasars about a good hunting spot around here. For good old... Oh, fuck. For good old <laughs> time's sake, you know? Drew me. No. He said as much with the chuckle. What? Uh, what? Ha! <laughs> huh. Ignis's face dropped, and he immediately sprinted towards the shrine's entrance. Oh, bro, you dropped your face. The Ignis, wait! After him. We can't let Ignis go alone. What, what about Drew me? <laughs> Hold your horses. <laughs> I, I don't have any horses. Yeah. <laughs> the audience isn't allowed to get up on stage. That's what we call a technical foul. <laughs> Truby lowered his shoulders. This is on cue. Hut, hut. Hike! Oh. Well, over here, I got my defensive line. <laughs> no. They've been playing 10 years of sports. <laughs> <b> <laughs> then a deranged band of minotaurs came rushing into the cave. Umilk, take over room and stand back. Done. <laughs> no, I have a better idea. Get out of here. Okay, Fuck. Bad, <laughs> we can't hold we can't afford to slip up. One wrong move and we could hurt her on accident. Then just don't put your gun at me. I mean <laughs> guns tend to point at things that should <laughs> Agreed. Ew. 
You're in no shape to fight either. Think you could sneak her out of the Minotaur ambush? You know, we could give him a gun, then he'd be as much shape yes. as I am. <laughs> yes, I should be able to. To milk, grab Kororo, quick. Sure. You. As soon as I wrapped Kororo in my arms, the eel carried me in turn. This is a Minotaur charged at us from behind. Eel kicked at the ground. He flew, nearly scraping the ceiling on the way out, so we could escape from the cave. I feel like it might switch to Ignis narrations. Looks like it's just general. Oh. Um, general or NPC? I don't know. Ellipses. Ellipses. It's Dromi. It's Dromi. <laughs> it's Dromi. <laughs> Well then, I guess I could let the regulars dance around for a bit before I ski daddle. Uh, I can't wait. Soon, soon, bro. Is he a yonder? The end of your scene? Uh, just like the good old days. Oh God damn it! Uh, I'm sitting up. I think I think uh, deranged Dromi might actually be my favorite character I voice. Oh my god! <laughs> I dashed voice. towards the stronghold, noticing the setting sun plunging Bestia into darkness. darkness Kingdom darkness. Hearts. Kingdom Hearts. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I alone illuminate the <laughs> darkness as I cut through the frigid air, running as fast as my legs would take me. <laughs> the flames cover my body, flared wildly, mirroring the chaos that stormed inside me. Oh, he's a poet yeah. now. Come on, come on, come on! The firewalls had suffered enough. Especially at my hands, and I couldn't let their numbers dwindle anymore. I had to look back and see if my door was closed. <laughs> <laughs> I've been lied to in my entire life. I was feared. I was used. It all felt heavy on my shoulders, for sure, for real, for real. I felt betrayed. But, even so, they were still my kin, the last of my people. I'll never let anything horrible happen to him, to them ever again. This time, I would protect them. This time, I would save their lives. All my hopes and convictions, burning finger. <laughs> Wait, Bruh. shit, burning village. Oh God. <laughs> oh my God. Disintegrated my palm such devastation <laughs> shut the fuck up my attention <laughs> ellipses my eyes were fixated on a scene a familiar sight I had long since buried I'll deal with, deal with you later Asian. <laughs> <laughs> huts and bodies charred as the Firewolf torches waned in the distance. Blood and vast soot soaked the snow. Soot? <laughs> Not a single firewolf was spared. Holy shit. A man I called uncle all these years tumbled on the ground. Disposed of. Forgotten. What I saw there instead were... The Minotaurs, hacking at their opponents relentlessly, showing no mercy to whomever stood in their way. Their eyes, they were clouded, disgusting. As soon as they noticed my presence, their eyes bulged open. Oh uh, shit. Longer, uh, my vision went red. My heart was ready to burst from my chest. Searing heat covered my body, a sensation that radiated from my body's core. If I were give, to give into this heat, 
It's time for Jack to let her rip. <laughs> the memes. <laughs> there could be only one outcome, Doctor. I think you're the care package. Right. Ignorance. <laughs> Uh, don't do it! Don't do it! Don't do it! Don't do it! Don't kill! Hold it in! Oh hi! In the future, violence doesn't have to be the answer. I want to believe in the future where we live in peace. Don't betray myself and in the future she believed in. But it was useless. I was submitting to my base self. Based. Ellipses. Longer ellipses. I fucking knew it. <laughs> ah. Yes. I remember now. Each time that I lost my sanity or came close to doing so, it involved the smell of blood. No, an appetite and aroma filled my nostrils, consumed my waking thought. My rampage instinct lay dormant inside me, crying out its cravings. It commanded me they wanted me to feed. Upon every living being in sight. Jesus. Oh, uh, bruh. Man, anyway, hi. It's me. I'm gonna get some water. Okay. <laughs> Good work. Good work, Good work. Kentuck. You'll be able to dodge a minotaur swinging arms, one after the other. We flew out of the cave as I hugged Koro tighter against me, and we were lifted into the cold bestian sky. We've escaped with our lives. Just as Eel squinted his eyes, we heard flames erupt in the distance. To neither of our surprise, we glanced over to the direction of the sound. Yeah, yes. Right beneath us, the Firewolf stronghold glowed a faint shade of crimson. Don't tell me. Was it? The stronghold is under attack. I'm afraid that Ignis too is there. Uh, yeah, we have to go there too. Unfortunately, I cannot grant that request. I haven't much strength left. Certainly not enough to protect you. We must not head directly. We must head directly to the Enchante Gate and evacuate. But Ignis. He will be alright. With his strength, it's unlikely that he will come under any harm. So. Uh. Eel's eyes shot open. He felt an intense ray of heat, one that could normally occur in such a frozen. One that could normally occur in such a frozen world coming from below. Mm -hmm. That could? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure that's right. <laughs> I don't think that's right. <laughs> you you let out a sharp gas, shifting his weight mid-flight to avoid it, but his trembling wings were slow to react. A giant storm of flame surrounded us. Play what a we angel. <sighs> <laughs> Eel! Cute. Eel's wings were exposed and burnt by the raging flames exploding below. I heard Eel cry out in agony before my vision became suddenly blurry. He dropped into the flaming maelstrom, down to the firewolf stronghold. Uh. <laughs> oh. Uh oh. That was a fucking RPG maker ass noise. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, I think it, it was the same. I think it was the same sound bite. <laughs> Longer ellipses. 
Uh. A small distance away, Koro laid there, passed out. We fell from quite a height, but somehow both Koro and I survived the fall. Luckily, neither of us were, either, were seriously hurt. Ugh. I spotted Eel, lying unconscious beside me. It seemed as though his quick reaction was more than enough to spare us our lives, for which I felt immense gratitude. Forgive me. Are you hurt at all? I'm all right, but Eel, you're... This... This is nothing to worry about. I will recover once we return to the human world. But more importantly, what is going on here? At Eel's prompting, I surveyed around us. Judging by our immediate surroundings, we landed within Firewolf's stronghold. However, the horror began to set in as I realized. I recognized no part of the secluded, humble stronghold in the chaos. It was a massacre. A force that left no stone unturned. It's all consuming is. and deadly. Jesus. A flaming tempest ate that ate all in its path. I watched as red sparks bounce off the armor, swallowed by snow. The white wonderland was painted with colors of grisly, brutal nature. A hot wind, fanned by flames, carried them all with, with them a strong stench of iron, the scent of which wafted from the trampled corpses lining the snow. At the center of it all was... Oh, that's a good oh. CG. Yeah. How do we love our CGs? Ah! Forgot the colon at the end. Colin! <laughs> <laughs> the curt, heavy handed, but most of all, kind Ignat. He sure is kind, guys. He and his aura shone a brilliant red. It was as if he was bathed in the blood of his foes. But how could that be? Relative to his ghastly appearance, there weren't too many corpses. What happened to all the others? Where did all the blood come from? <laughs> Ellipses? Oh, no. Ellipses again? Ellipses? Little by little, I urged my trembling self onward to look further up. The answer is right there. Two, be two milk. I had steak. <laughs> oh, no. no. His, his mouth. Thick, viscous trails of blood dripped from the corners of his lips. He had raw yes. steak. Yes, he it was rare. It. it was rare. <laughs> when I looked closer, it looked as though he bit into some, spit some onto something in, a, in into his mouth. After chewing a couple times, he gulped it down. Without having to think, my instincts told me exactly what I was looking at. Uh, uh. Choked with fear, I could hardly muster a loud scream, but he managed to pick up on what little sound I did make. Ah. After suddenly twitching his nose, twitch.com, <laughs> as if in Whoa. reaction to my scent. Dash, 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 dash. His dream, his what? Dr <laughs> what? <laughs> to milk? His. I don't think they meant it like. <laughs> uh, I think they meant clouded. I think they meant clouded, like no, cloudy. No, they mean dr dreamy. His dreamy eyes darted over to me. <laughs> oh, two milk. Now it's not the time, girl. <laughs> two milk. I knew you were a monster fucker, but still, come on, girl. <laughs> a sharp, focused glance. He eyed me with a predatory gaze, like I was a delicious meal. Oh. Just as Ignis took a step forward, ready, ready, reading, <laughs> reading, reading to lunch at me. Oh my god. <laughs> this is a dramatic scene, and yet. <laughs> the surroundings around him melted and evaporated as if, as if devoured by him. Ah, shit, he's reading. I gasped out of panic his, and his body burst into flame. Two milk. Stand back. Neil stepped in front of me. 
but he had already already used up all of his strength and was at his body's limit. Ah! <laughs> he stood in front of the menacing wolf who had marched up to us without fear. The wolf laughed savagely. He dug his claws into his defenseless prey. Ellipses. Splashes of red dispersed through the air. Eel's slender body was shredded and eviscerated by the frightening inferno. What? His angelic body dropped face down into his own pool of blood. Oh. <laughs> Blood soaked his body and drenched the clothing around his inanimate self. He fell atop the crumpled remains of his black and white feathers. <laughs> there was no hint of color or fami fami familiar in Ignis's eyes as the wolf looked coldly at his comrade. Ellipses. Ellipses. Uh, I couldn't even scream. Flashback now. Alas, I, al alas, I was falling apart. <laughs> I was ready to collapse. Reality was too intense to face. I wanted nothing more to, than to cook for us. Ah. My teeny tiny dream, the small fantasy I had for the two of us. Ah! Ignis reached his hand over Eel, who laid there collapsed in his blood. <laughs> Ignis wrapped his fingers around the angel's neck, lifting him up with ease. Dash. Then he opened his mouth wide. He slowly pulled Eel's unconscious body towards his gaping maw. What the fuck do you mean? It was easy to predict what he was going to do next. I... I climbed to the top of Bestia. Hoping one day I could change it. If I could become this greatest fighter without shedding any blood. I thought that maybe one day it would inspire some beast out there, like Mr. Beast. Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> Get ready to have a bite of my beast bark. <laughs> no. No, you'll never you'll never be Mr. Beast like this. Please don't do this. Stop! Don't throw away who don't, don't throw away who you are. Don't abandon your dream. Are you saying this out loud? I guess. Just before Ignis sank his fangs into Eel's flesh, he tossed the angel aside. I felt compelled to protect Eel, and I stood before Ignis with my arms outstretched. Stop it! Stop it! Get some help! Come back, Ignis. This is this is not you. This is this isn't why you trained your entire life, is it? I cried out. Cried out at Ignis, trying to appeal with him, appeal to him with the first words that came to mind. But Gah. all my pleading could accomplish was redirecting the firewolf's ire toward me instead. Gah. Uh, uh. Interrupted by a severe throbbing pain. Is it a bad end? Ignis sank his razor sharp fangs into my arm. But then I realized it a moment too late as my own blood splattered onto his face. Uh, adrenaline numbed the pain, but my head spun. The only thing rooting me to my current predicament was the dreadful sound of my flesh being ripped apart. I Ignis. What the fuck, man? My pleading voice never reached him. Ignis only slipped, sipped and licked the, the blood trickling down, trickling down my arm and... Yeah. He ripped a piece of flesh off of me. <laughs> what? Oh. Holy shit! Are we dead? Yeah, we're dead. Oh. Yeah, it's fine. What? It's fine. Everything's fine. After neutralizing the Minotaurs, I don't know who this is. We, we, I guess this could be anyone. <laughs> we hurried toward the fire, Firewolf Stronghold, but Miser and the rest of the party witnessed was... Okay, so it's not the three huh? of them, I guess. Who else could it be? Uh? <laughs> Who else could it be? <laughs> Far-reaching patches of blood. Corpses thrown into haphazard piles. 
the relentless flames surrounding them, and... Good. Eel, who lied on the snow, saw unconscious. His wings were torn and bald. His atrocious injuries died with his hair and clothing and blood. Ah! To the side, we saw him bite into... Two Milk's arm, ripping off her flesh. It was one of our fellow Enchante regulars. Who the fuck? I don't is know who we are. Talking? Our friend, I guess. Or so we thought. Why are you using we? Ignis. Oh shit. Our once thought to be ally wiped the splattered blood off his face, shooting a fearless glance in our direction. As we stood there stunned, the quickest to react to this tragic scene was Canna. So it's not Canna. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> so it's not Canis. Not Canis. <laughs> the swing of Canis's mighty sword blew Ignis back with the cannon's force. Under normal circumstances, the sheer power of Canis's attack would have torn Ignis's torso in half. But Ignis summoned the wall of flames to dull the impact of the knight's incoming strike, sparing himself from harm. Thank you for the care package, Salem. <laughs> Ignis moved purely on instinct. One to fill your, dark, fill your soul dark soul with lies! Well, that's kind of relevant to this. It is. He switched, realizing the path to his prey was obstructed, and showed his fangs. Ugh, wake up, Ignis! Ignis kicked at the ground, lunging at a speed too fast for the naked eye. What if this is Koro? What if it is? <laughs> and... Uh, oh fuck, man. Ign and two milk, free from Ignis's gra grasp, fell to her knees in excruciating pain. Blood begins to gush from her wounds, huh. but she clamps with her free hand. The blood shows no signs of stopping. Candace at eight. Is this Rindo? <laughs> we need to. I mean, I we saw think it. it's third person, but like it's probably meant to be miser, I, I would think, but I don't I think just... they're writing it correctly. I think it's just third person. Okay. Candace and Ignis, meanwhile, were locked into a lightning quick exchange of blows no human can see. Who oh, milk? Ew. <sighs> What's going on here? Miser and Rindo sprinted over to the two wounded members, hastily tending to their injuries. It, yeah, it must be third person. Yeah. They eyed each other and rushed in. Rindo went to Two Milk, and Miser went to Eel. They first cast a simple barrier to shield them in, from any impact from the duel. Eel, hang in there. Miser clutched Eel's blood-soaked body in his arms and cried out his name. <clears throat> No soft-spoken words escaped the angel's lips, and his breath began to slow. Meanwhile... Ugh, ah, oh, fuck, man. I'm not doing hot so hot. <laughs> no small amount of blood began to pour down Two Milk's slender arm. Two Milk was succumbing to traumatic shock from the punishing magnitude of pain, and her medic, Rindo, whose brow began to sweat as the pressure mounted, hesitated asking wow. her to remain calm. Crying. Keep applying pressure to the wound. I'll apply some first aid. Rindo fell back onto a practical solution, eyeing and ripping his handkerchief from his purse into fashion a makeshift plotter. Witnessing this, Miser... Um, damn. I, me. Is it Miser? <laughs> what? Wait, is it Miser? I think it is Miser. Jump in okay. there, buddy. I am a destroyer. <laughs> I do not possess the power to ease two milk and eels pains. What the fuck? He, <laughs> <laughs> he gently stashed away his regret. His eel upon the cold ground delicately. What's happening? <laughs> then he switched gears, honing in on the soul mission to stop Ignis. He okay. raised his hand. Just had to put some exposition in there? I guess. Some final end game exposition? Whatever. Uh, maybe. Try as he might, Candace's blade could not penetrate either of Ignis's blasting fists. 
Ignis's well fought. Although Candace's footwork was definitely tested by the pace of Ignis's heightened beastly movements. Tiger drop. Okay, tiger blade. Candace <laughs> blocked each of his foe's punches with ease, making the tent stool an even one. In the midst of all this, I think this Miser. Canis, jump back as far as you can. Uh, oh, Roger that. <laughs> he does, did as instructed a left left back. Gah! Left open. Ignis reacted by immediately facing towards Canis, but... Oops, sorry. Just kidding. Once Miser barked out his command, a spell was cast and a large shadow dwelled over Ignis's head. The shadow belonged to a giant iceberg, which soon was flung at, alarm at an alarming velocity, ready to crush the body of its target upon impact. However, with the power of his attuned reflexes, Ignis's, ign ignited, Ignis's ignited the flames covering his body moments before impact. The flames burned at a temperature so intense the whole icy meteor nearly melted, dispersing it into shattered chunks. But nevertheless, the immense impact and blast from the heavy ball of ice was felt. At last, Ignis's eyes returned to normal, indicating he had returned. Oh. Cool. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Ellipses. Ellipses, but longer. <laughs> Jesus Christ, ellipses. <laughs> it was loud. My head was been knocked around by some deafening explosion. Sharp bits of icicle floated down, tickling my skin. The red in my vision went away. Reverting everything back to normal. K I winced at a massive surge of shame and cringe. It occurred to me that I had no idea what I had been in the last couple hours. Well, I could think of a couple things, but <laughs> what, 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 what was I doing? Where was I? Huh. What happened? What was I doing this whole time? Just as my vision cleared up and focus returned. Ignis, you're back to normal. Canis was the first to pop into vision. Canis, why are you... Why are you pointing that sword at me? My breath left me as tall flames burned behind Canis, and the smell of smoke stung my nose. Huh. Don't tell me. I refuse to believe it. My throat tensed up. I couldn't speak. I looked around. bodies of my kin and the corpses of the minotaurs were stacked atop each other right in front of me the tip of canis's sword was pointed shaky and cautious miser and rindo with his fucking gun seemed guarded too lay next to miser's feet i saw ill mangled and torn up covered in blood and and the one Rindo held in his arms was uh, two milk eek two milk clenched the patched up spot on her arm and her face filled with terror as soon as our eyes met. I reflexively gulped down something that was still in my mouth. 
ellipses. Longer ellipses. Huh. What was that? What did I just swallow? Why did it smell and taste of iron? <laughs> Come on. You know exactly what this is. You know it's not healthy to be so delusional. Don't you, bro? A pair of feet type tap dance lightly <laughs> around <laughs> the massacred ground approaching me. Where do you get tap shoes? But man, talk about a view. How nice. Dromi arrived, and unlike how Two Milk looked at me fearfully. This is what more looks like. It is. It, uh, what is. Oh, uh, fuck. What it truly means to be a beast. I knew it. Everything from that day is a, as real as I remember. Dromi's eyes glowed with intense awe. Dumbstruck as the flames towered behind my bloody body. I watched Dromi for a minute, then toss him a throwaway question. Dromi, you... Are you the one behind all this? The Minotaur is in the human world. All the blood shit that happens every time I set foot back in godforsaken bestia. You're the one pulling the strings here, just so that I'd break out into a rampage. Yes, sir. Exactamundo. I knew you had some brains in there, bro. But man. <laughs> I thought these humans were just pests. Turns out they've got some use to them. I'm the would have taken ages if you all had to smell and bathe yourselves in in was beast blood. What? It. Hearing the word blood, Two Milk's body jolted. Blood. Huh. Anyway, we're getting off track. Time to wake up. The accident wasn't your fault. Ah. <laughs> uh. Listen, bro, you... You beat the living crap out of those nice cafe regulars, and in the end... You feasted on that girl's arm. Not to mention the Minotaurs, too. Seems like you really enjoy... Devouring them, don't you? I have caps lock on, you bitch. <laughs> yeah. Ah. He... He, he accused Ignis with a deranged smile. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's a ridiculous claim, it seems, was the answer we were looking for all along. Devouring. A beast that eats. What? No, it's me again. <laughs> yep, yep. Stash might have threatened the veil of my ability to rampage with another, more terrifying ability which I alone had. After all, the Minotaurs had to drug themselves just to make an attempt on my life. The truth was, no one knew why the Firewolves disappeared all those years ago. But the cost of learning all of this was just too great. Ah, damn you! Fueled by nothing more than rage, I swung my fist at Dromi. But... Whoa. Despite how many swipes I took at Dromi, he evaded each blow by a hair. But they weren't perfect dodges, they were two frames too late. I managed to yank his favorite bandana with my fist and glided it to the ground. 
Oh. Oh. Something weird happened. It was as if Drovi's expressions changed and his sprite at the drop of his bandana. <laughs> at last, at last, my dream come true. Getting a new sprite? <laughs> Drovi? <laughs> that sniveling persona you have, that tame pushover reg- wait. Pushover regular to Enchante is a fake. This is your true form, Catastrophe. A cannibalistic monster. That's who you are! A cannibalistic monster. Ah! The words hit me right in the gut. It was time I accepted my destiny. I caused destruction of this place. I dropped to my knees in the middle of the Walmart. The crimson stained snow. The sobering stench of charred iron. To think of to all those who fester inside of me. Ah, ah. I tried my best to purge my body of it all. But he couldn't. Despair. <laughs> Loss. Rage. Those emotions are shoved down my throat, ready to burst on a whim. Ah! I roar so loud the heavens quake. But there... But there to make a mockery of it all is, of course. Come on. This pathetic wasteland is ready to blow. Your time has come, Ignis Carbunculus. Or should I say, the reborn, the world devourer, doom incarnate, Vanier. Wait, no, that's another character to voice. Yeah. The heretic of doom had resurrected in fire. I don't know if that was me reading that, but sure. The resurrection of fire. Anyway, chapter four, final chapter. Yo. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I also oh. realize I'm just voicing male jury in the way that I do with a voice <laughs> from Street Fighter. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, thousands of years ago. Oh shit. A great calamity ravaged all of Vestia. Wait, is this Wind Waker? Oh no. Am I supposed to be reading this? I don't know. It's Koro Ro, obviously. <laughs> One, day. One day. Oh, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. You know, go ahead, do it, do it. Do it, do it. <laughs> yeah, do it. One day, in a frozen place where ferocious beasts lived, suddenly, out of nowhere, pesky beings called human began to appear. Oi! Oi, I'm a human! Most of them perished from the unforgiving <gasps> climate. Or were helpless and demonic beasts, but a slim portion survived. However, back then in Bestia, before the land was sealed by snow and ice further into the sea, There existed an enormous flame who was larger than any mountain. They called him the World Devourer Banar. In those days, Banar was able to be a lord among the beasts, capable of devouring. Starve off the mind from his insatiable hub. The beast was pushed into a deep and indefinite hibernation. But sadly, a bunch of humans came and woke the big monster up. As a result, 
<laughs> the awakened Venara went on a massive rampage to fill his empty grave. Neither human nor beast took a chance. Anyone who got in the big bad way <laughs> was devoured without the planet. In particular, Venar developed a taste of human flesh. He loved it so much he couldn't get enough. At least for a little while. Sadly for the big bad boy. Humans with their superior brain. Formed an alliance with the tribe of the priests. While they paid an immense sacrifice, they managed to subjugate Venar. However, Venar passed his legacy, his vicious, fiery appetite, to his descendants. These people became known as the Venitor, wolves with the blood of the heretic of Venitor. Naturally, fearing another incident, the beast tried to exterminate the Venator, but the Venator only the blood rampage. Thus, the beast could not stop them. With a little choice, they were chased off to a remote land with another clan, the Tigre. As their guardian. Eventually, these people would die out. Weakly, stranded helplessly, awaiting their own death. All this because of Manar. This is what it sealed the survival of the fifth cult. The predetermined will wage war at the heart of Christia. Then, after several thousand years, present day, in other words. Oh, okay. As time passed, so too did memory. The incident was long since forgot. The Venator was seen in numbers from Earth. Bestia's lands were reduced to a battleground with a strong always. And it remains so to this day. Fighting, killing, and spilling blood. <laughs> that what woke up the waking disaster. With the blood of Venar running through his veins. Exist. Nobody, not a single person, knew the truth. And that's that. Uh, hi, 
am alive. Good job. Hi. Good job, Koro. Yo. Good, good job, Koro. You. <laughs> Ellipses. You. <laughs> Koro, you did such a good job telling me that entire story. Why is your voice so deep? Oh, yeah. That fateful day never left me. Dromi's teaser of a story Don't. about... Wait, it was Dromi! Oops. It was Dromi! Oh, my <laughs> God. And I... Oop. And I... Oop. Oh. Oop. Of a story about the history of Venara just wouldn't leave my head. Afterward, the Werecat put up no resistance and was apprehended by Candace easily. They sent him to the GPM. Ow. Every... Each time I re revisited the memory... The gash on my arm, wrapped them through several thick bandages, ached in immense pain. Several days had passed. I don't chapter just her dealing with the trauma. <laughs> Maybe, who knows? After we somehow managed to return home, I was immediately taken to the hospital. <laughs> oh, Over the course <laughs> Yeah, we're went to the hospital. <laughs> Over the course of days my wound was treated. Fortunately, the injury hadn't damaged any of the nerves, but there's no ignoring the big hole in my arm, all thanks to his fangs. Although I got to avoid surgery, the scar would stay with me for my whole life, at least according to the doctors. Oh my god. But there is someone far in far worse condition than me, an angel marred by heavy injuries. Ugh. Eel had been in a coma the whole time, resting in his bed in an empty room at Enchante. He hadn't woken once. And... After Ignis had lost control, doing something which should never could never be undone, Miser and the others placed a barrier over the shrine, along with the history of Venar, and sealed him away. Ugh. He made no effort to resist. He hung his head low, a husk of himself. Uh, oh. <laughs> Everyone had gathered at the cafe, recounting the sequence of events to one another. Oh, okay. Naturally, the conversation was a solemn one, and even Kyrie, who wasn't there, became pale. What? Oh, in the past, the wolves ate on the humans, and that is how the history was. <laughs> now that she's out of treatment, we'll finally have a chance to sit and talk everything over. Not that it changes anything, of course. Thanks, Rindo. I have PTSD now. <laughs> Indeed. Any updates as to how Eel is doing? Miser shakes his head back and forth quietly, having watched the angel from the morning until the time we were gathered. He's in rough shape. The wounds close, then they open right back up, over and over. I've no clue when he'll come to. What? Eel's wounds are supposed to heal as soon as we return to the human world. He mentioned as much to me in Bestia. Miser picks up on my disappointment and continues in a hushed tone of voice. Normally, he would heal up and be ready to fly at a moment's notice, but his wounds are too severe. Combined with the fatigue of that earlier trip, his body hasn't had much of a break. I suppose in human terms, his body hasn't much gas left in the tank. Honestly, there's no telling how much worse it'll get. No way. That is enough to indicate the state of Ignis's mind when he went on his rampage. If at the time you, Two Milk, had not shielded him, you would already... It would have been eaten by Ignis, just like the other beasts. Is that what you're saying? Uh... My shoulders tremble out of reflex. Simply put, what we thought were nothing more than rampages from Ignis have proven to be something much, much more serious. A devourer of worlds, if he's a descendant of Venar, we're talking ancestral instincts. Yeah, it was probably through out. Autism. Okay, actually hit the dictionary, oh. I guess. Uh, refers to genetic inheritance and appearance of traits held by ancestors after skipping many generations. Atavism can also refer to it as ancestor reversion. 
I think that was the most useful dictionary entry we've I ever know, right? had. Honestly, I'm I'm so not proud. actually it was a dictionary. Yeah, I'm so proud. Shook it. Wow. He inherited his incredible raw power because he, the Vanar blood, because the Vanar blood flows in his veins. He is the only Vidinor who can eat. And to awaken that instinct, Dromi pulled the strings from the shadows. Ergo. That little. The moment his name is mentioned, Kyrie clenched his fists in frustration. You sure fooled us. His smarmy and jokey face was all a big front. Dromi was almost too eager to help us, all while leaking info to the Minotaur and other beasts. By getting him to fight more beasts, he triggered Ignis's hunger by constantly exposing him to the scent of blood. He only spoke of the danger of Vanar to the Minotaur, while conveniently failing to mention just how to awaken the instinct. <laughs> Beast of the little mercy for oh, the Whoa, yo! <laughs> the weak, not to mention species <laughs> different from their own. But they look after their own. They were likely acting to protect their children and mates, and tried to kill Ignis without giving it much thought. One thing explained why the Minotaur had be behaved in such a reckless way. It turns out Mikado had already uncovered the thing eating away at their sanity. It was a drug, the origins of which were unknown. Traces of it found administered to the Minotaur. It warped non-human minds. The culprit was, almost undeniably, Dromi. Which also means, the person who flung me into the gate to Bestia had to be him as well. The forgotten item at the time was an outright lie. My guess is that he passed through the GPM's wormhole, then slipped into Enchante through the gate. From there, he did his deed, hoping to kill me and make it look like an accident. Damn it, that puny, what do you want? I have a guess concerning his objective. He said as much himself. Yeah, come on. This pathetic wasteland is ready to blow. Your time has come, Ignis Carbunculus. Or should I say, the reborn morn, or the world devourer, doom incarnate, Venarar. Dromi's goal was likely to return Ignis to his ancestor. In other words, to resurrect Venar. But why? Although I did little more than squeak weakly, I might add, I might finally manage to join the conversation. What's the meaning of it all? Uh... Yeah, Dromi's not that dumb. Every beast and bestie would be devoured, him included. Frankly, it's a lose-lose situation. Out of consideration for me, Miser picked up where I left off, helping me to make my point. While we're on the subject, Rindo, has Dromi ever confessed to anything? Oh, come on. When we interrogated him, he carried on like it was no big deal. All smiles. The event had been clearly... Why don't you just drop a car battery on her head? Car battery. <laughs> Have you tried dropping a car battery on his head, Rindo? <laughs> <laughs> the, the event had been clearly upsetting Rindo. The car battery? <laughs> they did try uh, dropping work, a car battery. Did I... It didn't work. Oh. I'll continue to interrogate him, but I can't promise we'll extract anything worth bringing up. Ellipses. Hey, so that's it then. What does that mean for Ignis? Don't tell me, Dromi. Is everything he wanted? Is he going to become a Venar? In the past, Kyrie's stubbornness was known to clash with Ignis's, so the two rarely, rarely saw eye to eye, but... Ignis's is... The, the situation felt so dire, even Kyrie expressed his concern for Ignis. As for Kyrie's question... Mm -hmm. 
the adults in the room, Miser and company, shift into their seats. Look at two milk. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm not an adult. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't, don't say that. I run, I run a cafe or, and do taxes and everything, but I'm sure, sure. With this incident, Ignis, and not only preyed upon his kin, but he murdered them in cold blood. Now he's got a taste for human flesh, too. He's more or less fulfilled all of the requirements to were awakened, reawakened as a Vanier. Or awakened, not reawakened shit. Yes, at this rate, Ignis will. No way. Oh. Ellipses. Kyrie was incensed. Frustrated by the situation Ignis was left in, I, on the other hand, could hardly utter an opinion on my own. I needed to say something. Something. Think. But despite my best efforts... Oh, don't hurt yourself, honey. <laughs> I can't think. <laughs> Regardless, there must be something we can do on Ignis's behalf. We must look at all options at our disposal. However, Two Milk, perhaps it is better for you to rest in your room in the meantime. Huh? That wound on your arm is not healed, not to mention the emotional wounds. Huh? He means your heart. Thanks. <gasps> if listening to us talk about Agnes's fate is painful or even worrisome, then no, you don't have to force yourself. We'll handle what we do from here. An owner can't tend to her shop without an adequate rest. Ah, uh, as I feared, they read my mood on my face. I, whenever Agnes's name came up in conversation, my body trembled. Ah. Uh. Kyrie looked back at me. Ah. Uh. His eyes traveled between my eye, between my eyes. Okay, <laughs> in my arm. In inferring enough to form an opinion. I knew there was more to it, though. I noticed they avoid talking about what actual details, nothing about what really happened. It was true. My presence here is an obstacle to the more pertinent conversation at hand. Yeah, thanks. So I thanked them for their responses, apologizing for taking up their time. I bowed my head and healed up, headed up to my room. Wow. Uh. As soon as the door shut behind me, I plopped onto my bed and took Koro into my arms. You? Not out of, out of sadness, but fear. Ignis. Each time I heard his name, each something reminded me of him. The fear of being devoured possessed me, and I trembled. Until that tragedy, he was... Hi, Thomas. I cherished him. I never once felt intimidated by him. Thomas, please listen to me. I wanted us to be together. Ugh. Ugh. Crying here into my pillow would do nothing. That much I knew, but why? Why did this have to happen, Ignis? You. Fear pulled tears from me like a conductor. All I could do was cry out in grief to mourn the injustice of it all. Afterward, according to Miser, who had stopped by my room to brief me on the rest of their talk, they agreed they needed to, strength to strengthen the barrier that encased the shrine, plus Ignis. To do that, however, Miser and the others had to find some way to heal Eel in his current state. If we could do so much as to take him into the heaven heavenly world, he would heal just fine. But fallen angels weren't exactly welcome. Normal angels hunt fallen angels for sport, and it wasn't worth the risk of Eel's life. But it was good enough as a last resort. In the meantime, the regular search high and low for ways to improve his condition. As for Rindo, he was given the sole pleasure of interrogating Dromi. However, even if either either endeavor ca came to something, neither did anything help to help Ignis directly. What? Neither did anything to help Ignis directly to help manage his dangerous powers. Neither of them. Oh, hi, Ignis. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> uh, 
I sit in this icy shrine, all banged up. I got nothing to do but hang my head and listen to my thoughts echo. After that howl of despair, oh! <laughs> that bastard Dromi had the balls to come up to my face and tell me. Venar, ancestor of the Venator, he said. That I had inherited his blood, which makes me a world devouring monster. Apparently, I'm a legendary beast reincarnate. One that makes me hungry for flesh. Oh, not flesh again. Uh, e what? The idea is so repulsive, I want to gag, but nothing comes out of my stomach. In other words, I've already digested their flesh and blood and absorbed it all into my body. The thought sinks in. I can't help but feel disgusted by own body, which until now I had been proud to show off as a symbol of my strength. My own body. Ha. <sighs> ha. I see. No wonder they call me monster. It goes beyond eating food for humans. I devoured my fellow beasts, people that could have been kin, while they lived and breathed. I'm gonna have to deal with my trauma, too. <laughs> Weaklings, stranded helplessly awaiting their deaths. All this because of Venar. This is what instilled the survival of the fittest culture, the predetermined will to wage war at the heart of Bestia. At least that's what the mural says for two tax boxes. Uh-huh. Why? Why has the place I call home surrendered to such cruelty? If there is somebody long ago who's the root of the, all this bloodshed, oh. I will forever forsake him. Oh. And or her. <laughs> Who did I think I was with my no-killing pact? Man, talk about being a hypocrite. I ran my mouth, condemning everybody on my soapbox. But I was the worst of them all! Get a load of the devour of worlds! Every time I see the mural, I'm petrified. I know that one day that drawing will look less like a drawing and more like a mirror. Am I destined to become Venar no matter what? <gasps> no. I won't let that happen. All I have to do is avoid blood at any cost, and not to eat any. Uh, until now, I had no real need for food. So any cravings I had were superficial, like steak, but... My stomach let out a terrible growl in the darkness. A desperate, hungry cry. Uh, uh. I bend backwards and hug my arms around my torso. I clench my teeth, fighting the desire. But it was useless. I must eat! I bark into the darkness. Bark, bark. Uh, 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 I'm hungry. In times like these, the one to feed me was... Oh, hi. Uh, two milk. Oh, hi. Bye. Uh, okay. <laughs> Jesus. But when her face came to mind... Uh, my hunger worsens, and I can't help but gulp uncontrollably. Her flesh was perfectly delicious. A monster hides in my brain. It's part of me. When I picture it, it laughs as her blood drips from my mouth. Ugh. I stop breathing. No, I can't. I can't disrespect her memory by thinking of something like that. I grip my stomach and I continue to suffer in denial, surrounded by darkness. Kingdom Hearts. 
But, in a way, I was too late. To milk? E. Her flowing blood. I can never forget the look of fear in her eyes as they burned into mine. More importantly, I can't believe I attacked the person I most wanted to protect. I became a monster. I devoured part of her body. As if that wasn't bad enough, I heard one of her most favorite guests ill. Hell, I tried to eat him. Teal Milk trusted me when no one else would. She vouched for me. She really believed I'd be worth it. But it was all for nothing. I gave in to my wretched hunger. I betrayed her. I'm sure I never get, I never get to see the smile of hers glow again. If that's the case. It would be better for me just to kill myself. Oh. I kicked the idea for a bit of my head. Until I decided to use my own fist to do the deed. As soon as I placed it over my heart to rip it out of my chest. I'm dominated by another feeling. A rabid, beastly hunger. One that chips away at me until I satisf satisfy its craving. Damn it! Ah, oh, come on, man! Am I not allowed to die, either? Nobody in their right mind would want a monstrosity, like, to go on living. <laughs> like... Let's see you next time, folks. Uh... uh in my uh, next, uh, uh, reading. Who the fuck is... In a remote territory, stir the almonds of an awakened calamity. A promise from the fate about a tragic, bloody unrest. Get out of the nearby desolate ice field. The calamity is, mere, is a mere passing thought. A small tribe of nomadic beasts struggled to survive in the harsh desert. desert. Oh, it's the fox kid! What the voice that? Uh -huh. Okay. A young beast with lanky arms patrolled the outskirts of the village. They turned at the sudden sound of footprints. He lowered his body, assuming an offensive stance, expecting to see a band of raiders. Ah. What he saw instead were beasts even smaller than himself. They had long ears, so malnourished that they could snap on contact. The young beast regarded them as no threat. He began to ponder. Were they refugees from a random attack? Have they fled here looking for safety? The boy began to pity the small creatures. However, he hesitates to call to them of his own accord. Instead, he chose to observe them, losing himself in thought until... Oh shit! Is this? Okay, well, Your here I go. Ruby. <sighs> One of their rank walks towards him, crunching snow beneath her tattered hide shoes. Hey, you! Over there. Huh? B me? Is anyone else here with you? The girl exhaled haughtily through her nose. She was incredibly forward, stronger than her frail demeanor had suggested. The boy shot upright to maintain decorum. They had no intention of threaten threatening her. We were chased out of our camp. We've got nowhere to go. Would it be okay for us to start building a camp here? I promise we won't cause no trouble. The truth was revealed. They were driven from their territory and searched for a new place to call home. So long as they were considerate of their neighbors and caused no trouble, it was fine. They seemed awfully sincere to the boy. Survival in the Badlands was brutal. Raiders and murders pounced on any prey too vulnerable to look after its own. But these beasts seemed different. If they continued to wander, he thought, it'd be a matter of time until they were goners. He nodded immediately. Uh, I can't make that decision. I gotta go back to my village and ask the elder. Okay, let's go and ask. Uh, go on, lead the way. We're the strangers around here after all. Uh, um. His first impressions, it seemed, were off. The boy began to think they had mistaken her lock lack of consideration as confidants. 
Regardless, as representative of, of his people, he led the two of them to the Elder. Both of their feet trudged through the dense, knee-high snow toward the village. They shared the burden of their silence with their solemn, solemn trek until... Hey, you got any tips we should know about if we settle here? He couldn't tell if she was unable to endure the silence or if she was simply bored, but he humored her in attempt to break the ice. He stuck out his tongue in thought. Only one thing came to mind, especially for beasts of their stature. Hmm, uh, you'll probably be fine out here. Uh, there's the firewall stronghold that way, but a big icy mountain keeps things in there, and things, things in here, and things in there. Hmm, don't you think that's risky? It seems a little strange to live so close. I hope the rock keeps you all safe. You don't look like much, but maybe there's a fighter in you. Oh, if you must know, it's because at some point we were just like you, a tribe without anywhere else to go. There's something else besides the icy mountain, something protecting us. Protecting you? Thank you for the care package, Salem. The young girl blinked in confusion, and the boy became animated. Enthusiasm glows in his eyes. You ever heard of Ignis? He's the strongest beast in all of Vestia. Oh. It's him. He always comes to visit us. He keeps our village safe. Thanks to him, somehow we managed to see more days. The boy patted the top of his head, reliving when his hero patted it on the same spot all those days ago. Ow. <laughs> the warmth struck, stuck with him all this time. He found strength in the memory. Wait, are we deciding for the fox boy now? Oh. <laughs> okay, guys. Look. <laughs> um. What? I uh. think Ignis is really kind. Really kind? Oh my god. Good thing, because <laughs> I rolled a one on that and I would have made it choose the worst of the two options oh, oh god he's really kind isn't he i mean sure he kind of looks scary but a while ago he patted my little head really <laughs> is that it oh my god the girl watched the boy's face turn red as she scoffed and averted her gaze huh. i don't get how you can admire him he's just too soft haven't you heard his reputation? He's rude and brash and causes trouble wherever he goes. Do you know him? I know of him. Actually, we've met. The boy guesses to himself how. It seems likely that this young girl was saved by that same beast, the so-called strongest in Bestia. However, afraid to draw more of her ire, the boy kept quiet, expecting a rebuttal from her were he to mention his guess. The boy was sharp and, in a short time span, I managed to see her for who she is. I want to see him again. He hasn't showed up lately. Where could he be? Now that you mentioned it, I haven't heard any rumors about him fighting other beasts. True. As the girl said, the boy had noticed this too. His strength was undeniable, rendering the fear of losing him to battle just that, a mindless fear. I can't put my finger on it exactly, but I hope Ignis is, wherever he is, okay. Don't worry about it. First, if anything happened to him, all of that is his business. For weaklings like us, that's all out of our hands. Uh. <laughs> cool, glad we had that talk with myself. Yeah. Yeah, Oscar winning performance. Oh, oh it's Rindo? <laughs> Hello, Rindo! Speaking of talking to myself, <laughs> several days have passed since the band of Enchante regulars commenced our plans. The GPM headquarters, including all of its higher ups, shuttled it to and from, meeting on how to deal with Dromi. Through it all, Ah, I was there, stuck in an interrogation room. 
In all truth, I was starting to become fed up with the runabouts the kid kept giving me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck, it is yep. me talking to myself. Uh-huh. I just handed it over to you. Yep. <laughs> the maestro himself. The chaotic prince responsible for this hellish vortex before me. Restrained with non-human bindings. He whistled nonchalantly to my chagrin. Early on, he ditched his small fry act and revealed his true impish self. Dodging each question with a quip or a quack. He's a duck that? cow. Whoa. Don't take it from me. Take it from me. <laughs> Mikado also sat in on the interrogations, driving himself and his assistant mad as the latter grimaced from a side. My grief. I permitted you to use the wormhole as you pleased as a gesture of friendship. And you choose to betray me? I should have needed an x-ray to see you've got no heart. Isn't that right, Koo? B betray you? Hardly. I think you've been a little harsh, don't you think, Doc? It's not the wormhole's fault. If you laid out those rules from the start, I would have followed them to the letter. Ellipses. <laughs> it's Rendo. Yeah, it's still Rendo. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> His ability to shift blame was impressive. Bitch, you guessing. <laughs> but I sighed, realizing I only lost count of how many of Dromi's games I sat through. How are you so calm all the time? Is, this, is it a self-preservation thing? Or do you really not care what happens to you? What? But I haven't done anything to trouble the human world, have I? The Minotaurs came charging here to the human world on their own free will. I didn't tell them to jump into the wormholes. As far as I'm concerned, I've done nothing. Aren't you wasting your time? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I clicked my tongue, betraying my position. I'm in front of you. <laughs> of course, he was right. Romy may have been the mastermind. He set things into motion. That much is true. Wait, am I the villain in all the routes? But I couldn't pin <laughs> any of those things on him. To get a real charge in the human world. I mean, at the very least, you, your next route is Rendo, so... Yo! You can't be the villain of your own route, right? <laughs> With this, even upper management realized he was a special case. And we needed him for an alternative to... We need an alternate... Uh, we need... <laughs> an alternative... <laughs> to squeeze the truth for him. And the tragedy of Bestia was within a, the legal jurisdiction of Bestia alone. It was impossible to charge him for that. The lad was sly. But he knew this much. Oh, by the way, about the wormholes, you know how they happened to connect to your world? They had nothing to do with that, Kay. It's the big, it's all one big coincidence, you see? So strange that they all appeared out of nowhere. But thankfully, I made good use of them. Dear assistant, what do you think? Is he telling the truth? His vitals seem to indicate so. Well, there you have it. Now... How about freeing me from these chains? 
lifted his arms, poised and pitiful. Tonight, you have something up your sleeve. Ah, uh, they're pretty short sleeves. <laughs> I can't help. I can't help but wonder what else you are scheming. But from turning Ignis into Vanar. So I'm afraid I can't release you. But in the back of my mind, I knew that time was almost out. Soon I would have to relinquish custody of Dromi for lack of evidence. I decided it was time I loosened the tie to make the most of our time together. Dromi, what's in it for you? Why the blind devotion to Vanir? Why go through the effort of reviving him, knowing he'll just devour you too? What? That's... Well, it's obvious it'd be an honor and a cool one to boot. Uh, I am speechless. What? <laughs> For? What? What? His answer took a moment to register. I thought I misheard him, but... Hmm. Ah. Mikaro and, much to my surprise, his assistant were both catatonic. So I knew I hadn't imagined the response he gave. Dromi, meanwhile, was unperturbed by our reactions, and began to speak sternly. At first, it was about Ignis. No, not Ignis, he clarified. Vanar. And how his past led him to worship the heretic of doom. Uh, oh, shit. <laughs> this is another... Oh, God. Is this Dromi, then? Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah it's Dromi. Yeah, for sure. Okay. <laughs> Ah, put down the books, kids. <laughs> Why are there kids here? Get out of here. Get put down the books, people. Now then. Time for one of Dromi's history lessons. Hope I'm getting paid for this. Or should I say, Vanar's history lesson. Who am I kidding? Teachers don't get paid shit. <laughs> Since the night time is nothing compared to the magic, majestic tale of the world devour. Uh, but enough digressions of uh, with the digressions. As I mentioned before, but Tigris, like me, are also descendants of Veneer. They are ordered to monitor the Veneer Tor, so we huddled up with them in an uncharted region. Fast forward to now, Vanar is just a memory. All my people remember is that we got tangled up with Vinitar and got crap for it. Anyway, this is my story. When I was a kid, my village was attacked. Everyone I knew was dead or worse. It was the first time I saw anything like it. In other words, the first time I witnessed Bestia's cruel hierarchy at work. It was, well, it took me a while to get over the sight. Some things you never forget. Never. Ah. What is it now? A guy can only take so much. Huh? Why was this so shocking to me? Wasn't it okay to question it at all? Supremacy determined only in battle. It sounds good in theory, doesn't it? The platonic ideal of the world's best warrior. Goku. <laughs> but of course, reality was disappointing. It was an endless cycle of massacres. Chances for the strong to bully the weak. This is the kind of world I live to see. The last of my kind. Uh, it was pretty cute back then, too. Okay. Yeah, that's important. <laughs> Write that down. Okay. Then it sort of took me in, since our stronghold closely bordered theirs. They raised me as one of their own. That's where I met my bro. 
Big Bro always looked out for others. But he had his hands full with me since I had no other relatives. A certain incident happened around that time. At first, I thought to myself, Oh man, another boring massacre. I didn't give it much thought. But then I witnessed a true calamity. That's right. It was my bro, Ignis, who lost control and awakened his Zenyar instinct. No. The Manitaurus and even his Firewolf kin, all of them, were devoured in a manner of minutes. Uh, it's all so clear to me, even now. Such overwhelming power. He hunted his prey, chopped him, and swallowed him all in one gulp. He was soaked in blood, ascending to his throne as the greatest beast to ever live. It was a monumental step for beast kind. What beast could live to see more glorious days so long as they, as any of us could live? The sight mesmerized me so that I totally forgot how bad my head was hurt. The spectacle of such doom was enough to entertain me for hours. Boy, I was lucky. My bro returned to normal and passed out right after, sparing me from being eaten. So, no ever, so nobody ever got to find out exactly what happened on that fateful day. I covered up all the traces. Once things settled down, I started to research what kind of ancestral traits my big bro had. And I found a shrine once maintained by the Tigris people. Proof of Vanar's existence was chronicled. I put the pieces together, realizing that my bro wasn't just a Minotaur. But also had the traits which sent him apart from his kin. Set him apart. <laughs> but I had to remember. My bro Ignis was nothing compared to Vanar. Beasts nowadays were just mean bullies. Who pre uh, whose predatory instincts were dull from the lack of a real challenge. That's why. The Doom? I want to meet Venar. The beast is the only one worth standing atop Bestia's summit as the world's best warrior. I want to see the strongest beast in history devour his competition without fear and without mercy. In order to fulfill my dream, I carried out my plan in secret. One day I talked myself through the plan. But a plucky Kokoro heard, overheard me. Kokoro. Kororo, not Kokoro. Doki Doki. <laughs> he overheard me swimming quietly around the shrine. Ah. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> Neither Mikaru nor myself could do anything but sit dumbfounded as we just at what he just said. It was, in other words, adultery. <laughs> Much like a child admiring a blown up version of a television character. Although his obsession was in no doubt childish. Dromi convinced his deadly plan with no hesitation. All to resurrect Vanar. He seemed to convince himself that being devoured was worth it all in the end. His devotion was esoteric and trivial. It, it all seemed to me left a deep impression and so short. I had thing. I had thing left to say. <laughs> you are insane. 
Mikado flashed a brief smile, perhaps echoing my sentiment, sentiment for my eyes only. That's crazy. How could you resist opening up to my precious cool? What? Why in the world would I be interested in your doll? Ah, oh, but heal, man. That's someone I can't say I envy. Aren't angels, like, invincible or whatever? What would happen if my bro were to eat one? I wish I could have seen it for myself. Oh, and don't tell me. Do you think wings would sprout out of his back? <laughs> Drummy loved the, uh, to laugh at his own jokes. He cackled so hard, I thought he snapped. If he wasn't already crazy, <laughs> crazy, I was crazy once. They put me in a room, a rubber room full of a tiger. <laughs> but all of a sudden, he dropped the act. Even so, because of that damned girl, got away uh, in the way. I can see how things went down in the end. Seriously, that woman, gender, and Enchante <laughs> are such a nuisance. Fucking coffee doesn't even, it sucks, it's fucking water. <laughs> she doesn't even know what a coffee filter is, man. <laughs> Ever since my bro became regular over there, he took a, a break from fighting. Started spouting shit about steaks. <laughs> but you know, and today we, what the fuck? <laughs> You, you didn't hear that, dude. Ah, well, I guess that she had some use. She gave him a taste of her arm. Maybe the end justified the means. You! I realized I could no longer keep quiet. Ign Ignis looks after you ever since you were snot-nosed orphan. And that lady was nothing but kind to you, you foul beast. Inviting you as her very own guest to our Chan Chante. Now then, who the hell do you think you are? My bow row furrowed. One step away from... I mean, sure. I got a lot of respect for my bro. I admire him a bunch. Especially as the future Ben are. But that woman and even myself. I just spotted my bro. Ray, Ray waiting to be eaten. You've seen Zootopia, haven't you? <laughs> nothing more, nothing less. He was deranged watching Zootopia at a time like this. <laughs> Completely oblivious to what he was saying. Or any of what it, any of it meant. He got his Sorry, I was asleep. <laughs> Alexis. That's, right, that's the right line. <laughs> just, just fucking napping in the corner. Uh, wait. Uh, sh w where are you going? To my bed. Good night. <laughs> I have determined that any further interrogation of this clown would be useless. I request to leave at once and go Betty bye. <laughs> oh, he's got so You're... snuggy and everything. A request? But, but you're already halfway through the door. Who says, Mikado? Well, I can't well, tell you I blame him. I can't I'm say not I... sure how much more of this drivel I can stand to hear. In all truth, I had not been tasked with interrogating the little rat. I would have let him rot inside a cell. I gathered that Dromi shared my disinterest in how the interrogations were going. Ah, uh, how nice. Just between you and me, being cooped up in this room for so long is starting to make me cuckoo. So, I think it's time I took my leave. What? Ah! The entirety of the GPM's headquarters shook in a manner not unlike an earthquake. Because they the earthquakes. What? 
What? What? To promote you the sensation walk the petite Mikato who fell over. I felt my phone vibrate in my pocket as if it was a small earthquake in there. <laughs> Panic began to set in. <laughs> I looked at the caller ID, letting out a sigh as it recognized my subordinate. The timing of the call conceding with, co coinciding with the bizarre quake intensified my worry. I immediately picked up the call after talking about how I was doing that. This is Brindo. What happened? Chief, this is Ban. Underground. There's a wormhole underground connecting with the Bestia. There's so many. Ah! I pulled the phone from my ear as the agent cried out in agony. But I had heard more than enough. Then, cold sweat drips from my brow, and I hear a bell ring in my head. I realize the gravity of our situation. Mikado! We need to get out right away! Oh! By the time I toss my smartphone into my pocket to lead Mikado out, I saw a pack of manatars charging through the entrance, standing shoulder to shoulder. M Minotaurs? Wh where did they come from? Gah! I pulled Mikato behind me, acting as his shield, and pointed my weapon at the angry bull. You mean your gun? Your, your I gun? I pointed my gun! At, at, at all the minotaurs? A single gun? Yes. <laughs> The door swung behind them. It didn't take me long to realize it was. <laughs> Humans are so stupid. Romy freed from his bindings, stood behind the manatars, grinning maniacally. Man, you're dense. You should close down the worm. You should have closed down the wormhole as soon as you realized I was the mastermind. I mean. Didn't you expect something like this to happen? Although your stupidity worked out in my favor, guess I should thank you for being the worst captor in history, bitch. <laughs> As he taunted us, I noticed Romy was holding a phone. Don't tell me. I went to check my pocket, only to find. The phone of which I thought was safe in my pocket only moments ago was in his hand. When did you- Huh? Don't tell me you're shocked. Sheesh! You underestimate me too much. I see. You're having a flashback to the- Oh, okay. Whoa. <laughs> Looks like Ignis' self-proclaimed little brother has come to pay on Chante a proper visit. I have to admit that I'm impressed. We reached the gate to Enchante without noticing him at all. Oh, when it comes to ducking and running, no one's better. This guy's a prodigy. Shoot, even I forget now and then. <laughs> How could I let him slip with from notice? Romy was a marvel, capable of tricking humans and non-humans without battling an eye batting an eyelash. He's a per the perfect con man. But I knew there was only one reason Dromi would steal my phone. Only one. You don't want me calling on Shantae, do you, you punk? I barked out madly from across the room, and the ground shook as the Manatars began their menacing approach. Okie dokie. Try not to get trampled by my furry friends, okay? Furry? Yeah, they watch Zootopia too. <laughs> oh, no. As for me, in order to resurrect Venner for good, I gotta fetch him. Uh, I gotta fetch him last, the Last Supper. Damn it! Wait, draw me! Da da da. But it was a cry to the void, and Dromi answered with a dismissive wave. Kinda like that one dude from Final Fantasy. Without <laughs> breaking his aloof stripe, he left the room. 
I love oh, playing oh, the villains. <laughs> the scene's finally over, thank God. Good Christ. <laughs> oh man, I always thought it was a snack. I really oh like my this. God. <laughs> I really like this route. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to call um, it for today. I like and hate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's... It, yeah. Yeah, what are, you, what are your thoughts so far, guys? What the fuck? Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. I like being a Junko esque villain. Yes. Yeah. Why do uh, I do yeah. you had you, like, had you guys enjoy the cannibalism? No. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> why do I always oh, yeah, get these characters? Why do I always get these characters? Why do I always get these characters? Hey, <laughs> I got the Yandere last time. I got the reverse Yandere last time. Yeah, you didn't actually have a Yandere. You had you had the fake out. And you didn't have a cannibal Yandere. last time, Ten Ten. Uh, Fun. You played Lupin. <laughs> Lupin. Lu Lupin's not a cannibal. Too bad he died. Yeah, too bad he died. <laughs> yeah. Rest in peace, Lupin. Always miss him. But yeah. Uh, ah. Thank you guys for joining us for Cafe Enchante. You know, a lot of things happened. And yeah. uh, <laughs> next week, what what day is it? Next week. Next uh, week. next week's gonna be the final for this one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, everybody well, give good vibes to Ten Ten's vocal cords. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, g give Ten Ten strength in this trying time. Because I bet there's going to be more voices and voice lines for him to do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can always change it, Ten Ten. No. no until no, the last not, episode. I mean, you, can. <laughs> you can. No. Absolutely not. Why not? I mean, Why not? Oh my goodness. <laughs> um today we are going to be raiding uh Chai's online. We're gonna be raiding Chai's doing Honkai Star Rail. Because I don't I don't think he's like a rare person online right now, so let's do that. Oh, yeah. I see. Uh -huh. I think I'm getting the Rindo voice down. I've messed it up every so often that I'm just like, oh, I don't know what I was going for. I mean, don't worry. You're going to have a lot of practice next time we do a route for this game. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like a lot of practice. <laughs> In fact, you'll be you'll be the romantic interest <laughs> next time. <laughs> All right. But yeah. Next week, we'll be finishing up this route of Cafe Enchante. Uh, reminder, Halloween, we are doing Desperate Game. <laughs> Hell yeah! yeah. Oh, however, God. however long of a route we have left on that game, I don't fucking know. We might die. We, we might just so die. Ready. I don't know. We, we could just I die. I hope we just die. <laughs> It'd be really funny if we just like booted up the game ten minutes later. Play for we die. five minutes and then we die. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have something just in case. Okay. Um. But yeah. See you guys next week. Everyone, say bye. 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 Chill milk flesh. Don't <laughs> <laughs>